all this is dr mubeen sayed from drbeen.com welcome to one more show so the discussion today is the novavax vaccine questions your questions so the question sources are three uh youtube twitter and patrons so let's have those questions answered you heard this morning that nova novavax team got the recommendation from the vaccine advisory committee and hopefully within another couple of days they'll have fda approval as well and then they will be available as soon as they can ship it out to the various places they should be available for um administration so with this <clears throat> let's start today's this morning's <laughs> crowd was a little tough crowd but i hope it was all okay let's start so this is drbean.com if you like this work want to support it you can buy about i should actually have a good <laughs> exact count but 800 to 1000 lectures here which are in addition to what you have on youtube and these are for lesser than 100 dollars so and that is a one time fee it is not monthly recurring fee so i think you can take advantage of this so that's one then here are the questions from patrons that we'll go over these are youtube questions these are twitter questions and then i have done some videos actually a lot of videos about novavax so if you go to this channel dr bean channel and go to videos and just search for novavax you will actually come across many of the videos that i've done so any question where the request is to redo or discuss what novavax itself is that you can watch here i would answer specific questions <clears throat> so here is a video i think this was the first video i did about novavax this was um january 13 2021 so then this is another 7 minutes video this is novavax um trial results and then here is here's some more data we'll look into that okay so with this let's start so the first let's start from here from the patrons and on the live chat if you can do me a favor hold on to the questions yet what happens is when you write questions and they scroll up they disappear so i have a set number of questions that this question stream yard window shows and then it keeps truncating the questions which are before so hold on to the questions yet and let me answer some of the questions here and then we'll come to the live questions as well so here on the patron side i had asked them that do you want to have a separate zoom call about the novavax or just generally the questions here they said we are good with the youtube here so first question lisbeth said do you have any sense yet of whether vaccination assuming no vaccine adverse event lessens chance of long haul covid if you do get omicron So that's a very good question and the answer is actually not a very simple answer so let me draw the answer to explain how you can think about it So first of all long covid has multiple possible pathologies we have been discussing this for a long time for example there are pathologies that are clotting related there are pathologies that are for example blood cell shape change related then there are pathologies that are related to blood vessels and blood vessel um blood vessel damage or inflammation related vascular inflammation that includes heart as well so let's say cardiovascular system inflammation and i would put the most important one as immune dysregulation now what you may have seen that various patients of long covid there, there can be mast cell activation within the immune system there can be macrophage 
uh, activation syndrome. There can be T-regulatory cell dysfunction. There can be autoantibodies, which is a result of mimicry. So now let's see that here is a person. That person, let's say, have long COVID. And the reason for long COVID is that their cells, their body is making, immune cells are making autoantibodies. Let's say um, anti-ACE2 antibodies. So this is my depiction of anti-ACE2 antibodies. This is ACE2. This is the antibody. So now if the body is making anti-ACE2 antibodies and these antibodies would continue to connect with ACE2 receptor and cause a lot of issues. Now imagine in this patient, you introduce a vaccine. Let's say you introduce Novavax or mRNA. You introduce spikes, right? So this is a spike. Let's say this is Novavax. Now, when this spike is introduced, what will happen is that the spike itself is a candidate to go and bind with the ACE2. But hopefully, a large quantity of spike is not going to be produced and a large quantity of spike will not be distributed throughout the body because the amount of spike protein is limited. Novavax vaccine is not going to train your cells to produce spike. Instead, it is spike from outside. So the that five, five micro liter or whatever micro something, micro liter, I believe, that's the spike quantity that is there. Now, these spikes can cause the antibodies to be produced, which are going to be anti-spike antibodies, correct? So the antibodies are going to be like this. Now, these anti-spike antibodies may be able to connect with these antibodies. So let's say if the spike directly works with the ACE2, because spike does, and the anti-spike antibody and this anti-spike antibody are the same. This is not anti-spike antibody, but this is anti-ACE2. Right? So this is going to look like spike, because spike can bind with the ACE2, and this antibody can buy, bind with ACE2. So they would look similar. So let's mark the antibody and spike will look similar because they both can bind with the ACE2. Now, if there is an anti-spike antibody produced, let me make it green, this one, then it is possible that this antibody, the green antibody, will also be able to bind with this antibody and temporarily remove it. So when that will happen, that will give patient some um, break from continuous immune attack. Now, would that actually, will this production actually cause the other cells that are producing this anti-ACE2 antibodies to actually go back to normal? Maybe. Why? Because the immune system, when it is activated by the vaccine, then the regulator cells are activated as well, which will then regulate almost all the immune system, including any previous dysregulation that might get benefit as well. So that means a vaccine can potentially offer two types of benefits by helping the immune system produce anti-spike antibodies, which would also act on the anti-ACE2 antibodies, and by triggering the immune system, which when goes down to resting, then other inflammatory states can go down as well. That is one possibility. This is where people say that, hey, I got the vaccine and I felt better. However, there is a reverse of this as well, where getting the vaccine causes the immune system to become upregulated. And it was already dysregulated, and now it is even more dysregulated. And the result is that the vaccine enhances the previous long COVID state. 
So that means there are both possibilities. It depends what is the reason for the basic dysregulation and if that reason is being uh, fixed. So could I say that in everybody who receives vaccine, the long COVID will become okay? Not really. This is in a very broad, rough way. This is like electrophoresis, that you clean out the inflammatory system, you clean out the NTS-20 bodies, maybe for a couple of months, two, three months, and then it can resume. And similarly, can it actually help give a break? It's also not necessary. So, Elizabeth, I'm so sorry that I could not give you a straight one answer, but that's how our bodies work. Elizabeth then continues and says, spike protein is present as antigen. Although the vaccine does not get inside our cell to use its machinery, so this vaccine, Novavax, so just a very quick um, Novavax action mechanism. So let's say Novavax is, is injected in our muscle cells. And so this is, let's say, a muscle cell. They are not like this, but I'm just making them as an illustration. This is an immune cell. Let's say this is a dendritic cell. This is a muscle cell. There may be some fibroblasts sitting here and some collagen making other things and connective tissues. And here comes Novavax protein, subprotein particle. Somebody was saying this morning that these are nanoparticles. No, they're not nanoparticles as the definition of nanoparticle has become with the messenger RNA vaccines. That is a lipid droplet in which is the mRNA packaged. These are not that. They are just nanoparticles because they are a bouquet of the spike proteins. These are spike proteins stuck together in the shape of a virus's size in the shape and size of a virus. That is what they call nanoparticle because it's a small nanometer particle. So this, these spikes here cannot enter a regular cell which messenger RNA nanoparticles can. Their job is actually to enter any cell they can. That is why they have the nanoparticle, lipid nanoparticle on it. So we should have the correct definition. These have lipid nanoparticle. Lipid's job is to help them enter cells. This one, Novavax, is just nanoparticle. That's a small particle, but this cannot willy-nilly enter cells. So this will have to be actively picked up by immune system cells, eaten up, phagocytosed, broken down, and then worked on. So the Novavax spike proteins will preferably enter the immune system cells. So now if I go back here, spike protein is present as an antigen. Yes, that is here. And although the vaccine does not get inside our cell, so normal cell, no, based on mechanism that seems to lead to vaccine long COVID, does Novavax seems to be a better bet? So again, I think it's not about vaccine itself able to get into the cells or not. It is about body's immune system's behavior. So could it be better than mRNA or, or adenovirus? I think there are certain benefits of this vaccine. But in terms of the mechanism with, with long COVID, I can't say that. Okay, so. Correct. So John Snyder says it's just a piece of protein. Correct. It is spike protein. It's a sub protein. Okay. Continuing. Then Christina says, I heard a few times the importance of discussing potential harms with patients. So let's say a doctor sits down with a patient and says, well, here are the vaccines and here are the benefits and the harms. But do you think now that there is another choice? They will try to force mandates again. So her point, I think, is that if this vaccine may be less harmful, then will they impose the mandates again to say, well, now you have a better vaccine, so mandates are back on. I hope not. And I think the mandates have been struck down once, they would get struck down again. 
so and i think it is wise not to have the mandates our society has gone far beyond the need for mandates so i don't see a reason and i don't see how the mandates will become successful as they've already been stopped what i really wish is that as a result of those temporary mandates or the uh, mandates in the in various corporations health related or essential workers and they fired people that i wish that they would reverse their decisions get those people back on and they actually should apologize to them i don't think it's going to happen i our system is not yet that um ready for this kind of a thing but that's what should have happened okay continuing bs bonfire says i still wonder why of all possible epitopes vaccine makers with the exception of sinovac seem so taken with the spike protein especially since it is apparently pathogenic all by itself even without the ability to replicate this makes me wonder if novavax is actually less problematic than pfizer moderna janssen or oxford astrazeneca so look there are multiple ways to look at the benefits of the novavax uh, for example it is not built into fetal cells yesterday somebody was commenting when i was doing the yesterday's talk about novavax yesterday somebody was commenting that somebody said is it from the fetal uh, cells and somebody else commented that well they have purified the fetal fetal cells and tissues and there are no more cells when the vaccine is finalized so no novavax has no um participation of the fetal cells at all it is made in the moth cells and so it has nothing to do with the fetal cells so that is one uh, area where some people have hesitation and now this vaccine can take that hesitation away then the second is there are some people who say i don't want a messenger rna it would get into my cells and cause my cells to become modified and so for them this could be a good alternative because it does not enter cells and go and be a genetic material then there is a third part which was a question as well somewhere in these questions and that was will it need that hyper cool storage supply chain for ultra freezing so no this can actually be stored for 60 days at the normal refrigeration temperatures and even at room temperature i believe it can stay on for 12 hours so 2 to 8 degree centigrade or celsius is fine for it so going back to bs bonfire it really depends what are we talking about in terms of the benefit this is a limited quantity of the vaccine however now hear me out the myocarditis as much as fda kind of created this strange thing i think one they was they were hoping that they may my opinion they may have been hoping that this would not get approved and the second is i think they're also covering their behind to say we made a lot of noise that this is not a good vaccine and causes myocarditis so bad that they approved it and so here we are so i think there was they've learned a lesson and they were doing some of that so um in terms of myocarditis for example although if you look at the company's response they say it is balanced between placebo and um novavax and then uh, fda says no but if we forget that for a second and look at what could be the mechanism and if the mechanism is the autoimmune mechanism which is novavax vaccine pieces or the spikes are acting as the spike pieces are acting as epitopes against which when the antibodies are made these antibodies can cross react with let's say heart tissue as well as was in the document we discussed yesterday especially the contractile protein of the heart then 
giving this vaccine can cause the antibodies to be produced that would attack the heart and myocarditis can occur. Now, remember this, if this is happening, this would happen with mRNA as well or any other spike protein. So yes, there is still a danger of this vaccine causing autoimmunity because eventually we are showing a spike protein to the immune system and saying, make antibodies against this. Those antibodies can cross-react with our tissues. So that a particular... Um, uh, my computer is making noise. So that particular risk is not gone. So I hope that answers your question that... So this makes me wonder if Novavax is actually less problematic. So it may be less problematic in certain parameters, but in certain parameters, it may not be. For example, immune dysregulation or this myocarditis, it may not be. Lisbeth says, if a COVID prevention protocol like FSCC also good as a pre-vaccination protocol, possible. And I, you know that I cannot. Somebody was calling me out to say, Dr. Bean does not talk about things that YouTube does not allow. He is a coward. <laughs> and, and guys, this is YouTube's channel, right? This is my channel on YouTube. YouTube has a bunch of policies. It is stupid to actually go against those policies and get the channel down. So I sometimes when folks leave such comments, I crack up that what kind of a comment is that? This is like saying, I'm going to stand in front of a car. I'm not a coward and I will try to stop this. <laughs> so that's not going to happen. So if I really want that I need to go somewhere else, then I can go to Odyssey and Rumble. I tried to go to Rumble and Rumble was nothing but a place full of people who were stealing content and calling it under the name of Patriot Channel and stolen content is there. Rumble promotes content to be stolen. So I don't feel great about that. Odyssey is improving themselves quickly, but they're not there yet. So this morning folks said to me as well, that why aren't you using Odyssey? The problem is if I have to relate to Odyssey and Rumble in addition to YouTube, then I have to use OBS. And when I use OBS, then the question answers, comments, everything goes away. I have tried it a couple of times. It doesn't work very well. So um, there are things that have their limitations. Going back here. So I'm not going to talk too much about the, the protocols that we all know work in other ways. Deb A says, I haven't been keeping up. Is there a better preventative available than IV for those unvaccinated among us? I think there is not much more of the drug. Fluvoxamine has been proven to be useful. And Bromley says, in the discussion last night, you said that myocarditis high. Can you explain how you arrive at that conclusion? So that is not my conclusion first. And then I was, I repeated many times within that discussion that the company, the first very opening statement was from the company I read, where company said, we don't think that there is an imbalance, it is balanced. So company used their data of 50,000 people. FDA, and I showed it, FDA showed their data of 40,000 people and said, based on this, here is our review, which, by the way, the company, the Novavax company today refuted that as well to say, you are not counting correctly. And then the trial itself had 29,000 people and that had a different number. So, and I had actually explained it multiple times. So it is not my conclusion or my arrival of that conclusion. This is what I think is a fight. I think it is behind us now because if the recommendation is done, I believe approval would be there as well. The only thing is tomorrow, if we go to FDA and say, FDA, why didn't you care? They would say, well, we made a lot of noise. And there is somebody who became a member. 
Skyfrog became a member. Skyfrog, thank you very much. Okay, continuing. Anne says, can Novavax be used as a booster? Yes, I think that they have Novavax booster. And I think in the other countries, they may be using Novavax as a booster to other uh, vaccines. The only question, as I always say, if it is not exactly used in a trial, the question becomes, what is the quantity of the Novavax that should be given? How far away from the previous vaccine's dose? So these are not known things, but can it be used? Yes. And says, how is that the spike protein in Novavax is not toxic or is it? It is the same behavior. If spike protein is going to be toxic to some, then it is going to be toxic to them. The only thing is spike protein quantity in Novavax is controlled. Neither is there any genetic material that is going to help cells to continue to produce it for some, some days, nor it is like a, vex, a virus which has entered our, our body and making more spike protein. So it is a limited quantity. I think the more... Um, the more stinging thing in the vaccine is the adjuvant because the amount of spike is less. It is the adjuvant that is kind of kicking the immune system to say you work and that causes the amplified immune response. So if you just say toxic spike protein itself, then yes, but the quantity is limited. So that means if immune system did not become dysregulated, or if immune system did not develop mimicry and started going and attacking heart or other blood vessels or other tissues, then this should actually be less, um, even the side effects should be less prolonged. But my thinking is, wherever spike is involved, there are, all bets are off because it can cause immune system dysregulation. So then Lisa says, is the Novavax adequately safe and effective? Also, I would love to review Germany's safety data on the Novavax. So Lisa, I would do the Germany's data review separately. No, adequately safe and effective is a difficult question to answer because the only answer could be from the data that we are seeing from trial where they say the efficacy is 90%. So now... Did you see today, this morning's discussion, they said, what about waning? And they said that up to 180 days, the vaccine stayed good and then started waning, or at 180 days, it was waning. That is about six months. And then they said, we gave the booster, and that amplified the antibody production. So I will really not like vaccines to just disappear in their efficacy or with their efficacy within five, six months. That's not really a, at least I had not heard of vaccines doing that. And you saw that with the other vaccines, the efficacy drops. It used to drop at four or five months and then with Omicron, it drops at two months. For Novavax, although this is my favorite vaccine, for Novavax, they're saying six months, but even that six months is not Omicron. So Omicron could still be causing Novavax's efficacy to drop below six months. I do not know because there is no data. But if you look at the previous other vaccines to the other variants, their behavior was against the other variants. They were also five months, six months, and then the waning occurred. This has the same behavior. The waning is occurring after five, six months. So... That concerns me as well. Okay, so this is the <laughs> patrons. So patrons, thank you very much. And I still have a standing offer for you. If you like, you we can do a Zoom call and discuss it too. So that's patrons, done. Now, before I go to the uh, YouTube and Twitter, let's have the live <laughs> chat over here and see what's happening. Okay, let's see. So now if you have a question on the live side, please uh, write Q. Okay, here, John. 
Dr. Bean, do you know if the Novavax vaccine was developed or tested with embryo cells? So I know that their whole platform is moth cell based. And when I discussed it, and we can actually look at it right now as well. When I discussed it in my older videos, I did not see in their technology, I did not see fetal test anywhere. Now, did they design it in the fetus, uh, fetal cells? I hope not, but let's see. I'm going to Nova Vax vaccine technology. And I actually have a video about it. I'm just going to open the site and then share the screen. So give me one second. I know I'm not sharing this screen yet. Let me share my screen <laughs> so you can see my homework. New era of vaccines, except cookies, uh, where is technology? Insight, science and technology, our pipeline. So... COVID-19 pipeline details. They must be happy today. So they changed it. Um, why did they change this site to become... Let's see this. So this is the nanoparticle vaccine and adjuvant platform. They had a very decent um, set of graphics but it looks like they changed them. So here is the structure. This is not made in fetal cells as far as I know for design either. So they identify an antigen. So let's see. So they say six steps producing a investigational vaccine. After identifying an antigen that can be used to stimulate an immune response against the viruses in question, the corresponding gene is modified and inserted into a baculovirus, a type of insect virus. So they start right from the insect virus. The baculovirus containing the recombinant antigen gene is used to infect the moth cells or SF9 cells. And I had done this discussion with beautiful... <laughs> Beautiful diagrams of mine. The baculovirus multiplies inside these cells. As part of this replication process, the recombinant antigen gene from the baculovirus enters the SF9 cells, nucleus where it transcribes into mRNA. That mRNA comes out into cytoplasm, makes the antigen, then they break those cells like egg, eggs, and then they purify the vaccine. The recombinant, the recombinant antigen proteins are harvested from the surface of the SF9 cells, purified and arranged around the nanoparticle core. The recombinant antigen protein nanoparticles are mixed with matrix M to create the investigation vaccine. So once again, these are protein, antigen protein nanoparticles. These are not lipid nanoparticles. So uh, John, I hope that answers your question that I don't think fetal cell is involved in the design process. So that is one good question. <laughs> the, mo the, the moth. moth. So somebody was saying, I'm, I'm developing butterfly wings. Okay, so KB Usenet says, what do we know about Matrix M? So I did that discussion as well. Matrix M... So there are some who have concerns about Matrix M and some think it is, I mean, the company itself is pretty proud of it. So it is an adjuvant and adjuvant's job is to kind of kick the immune system. So any adjuvant can cause immune system's behavior to change uh, severely. So if you go here and say Matrix M adjuvant, they would actually, so here, our matrix M adjuvant comes from saponins, naturally occurring compounds in the bark of Quilaya saponaria. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Or soap bark tea, commonly found in Chile. 
Saponins have a long history of being used for their medicinal properties. A vaccine containing another saponin-based adjuvant has already been approved in the U.S. So Novavax produces its matrix M adjuvant through a unique process that results in a very small spherical particle that resembles a honeycomb-like structure when viewed through a high-power microscope. Matrix M adjuvant particles are smaller than a human hair. So that's one can continue to read it, but that's how the matrix M is. And you may have heard this morning, there was a question about saponins and concern around saponins effect on the immune system. So John Snyder says, actually with the Omicron variant, if you want to protect against infection, you have to boost and boost and boost, essentially keeping your immune system running all the time which I'm not a fan of that. So KC says, does it have polyethylene glycol? So as far as I know, Novavax doesn't have polyethylene glycol because number one, it doesn't have those severely freezing temperatures needed for which the PEG is also needed to kind of keep the uh, whole system from uh, becoming so frozen and bound that it cannot be separated. So what I know is that it doesn't have peg. Okay, so <laughs> I saw a comment. David Morris says, Dr. Bean, have you done any update on the military COVID vaccine that you covered some months ago? No, actually, I spoke with the um, with my friend over there, and we decided we'll do an update and discuss again, but we have not. Time to do that too. Nipa says, so Novavax is for those who are still not vaccinated for the original virus. Well, so I think the trials are for primary series and the booster of to the primary series however i think it can they it can be used as a booster for other vaccines too however the variant does not include omicron so that is a problem vinod says could the two doses dose vaccine regimes regimens actually be designed because manufacturers know second dose may restore immune dysregulation if yes skipping no the problem is the following and i see one more member <laughs> so thank you very much for the membership the problem is that if they try to give you one dose that is good enough then they have to give so much of adjuvant or the immune system stimulant that that can cause severe side effects so they are trying to break it apart into two I think even then the two booster doses are too near each other. I liked UK's behavior of separating them by two, by three months. So there is someone who became a member. Siddhartha became a member. Thank you, Siddhartha. And New York City, Goro Doc, thank you. So um, continuing to look at the questions, let me... So <clears throat> New York City Gorodok says, girl booster, 18 year old, mandated to start college. Man, this this was anyways. Had original C19 early. Why two forced Pfizer late 2021, Omicron 2021. Just um, Omicron again a month ago. If this was your kid, which booster would you go with? So girl, that means mRNAs can be okay. Johnson & Johnson, never. Adenovirus-based, never. Um, Novavax may be a possibility as well. It doesn't do cause myocarditis in young women. It does cause in young men. Or at least the cases, if these were in, uh, in, in balance, 
then even then so without saying cause i'm using the fda's term where they said this causes so let me refrain from doing that but the men had more cases uh, advanced age women had the cases of uh, myocarditis so this is a good option um, the adenovirus based never and then messenger rna that is just my opinion that's not a medical advice Lisa says, didn't the Mexico trials include? But the thing is, this this data that was submitted, that did not touch upon Omicron at all. I mean, they said that some trials have Omicron, but that's not used. Mega Muzi says, then it's worthless, no? So there is a good thing and a bad thing. Bad thing is, this may not have the efficacy as we suspect or we want from a vaccine because the variant is different. Good thing is that now that it is um, approved or authorized, you probably saw this question this morning as well. They said, if you had to make a change to the protein, how fast could you make it? I didn't catch the answer very correctly, but um, I think once they are on in the game now, in the play, they could probably make their vaccine for Omicron. So Skyfrog says, I noticed one age group for Novavax had only about 75% efficacy, but that was based on two cases. The efficacy number great influenced by small numbers correct that is correct similarly for example 75 plus had 100 percent efficacy because the total count was 298 people so yes the the numbers were still i am kind of happy that they got themselves to a point of getting authorized and so now they can do better So this is a very interesting question. Anna says, sorry, not sure if this was already answered. If the spike in Novavax may cause myocarditis in some people, is it safe to assume that COVID could do the same? Maybe. So the thing is this. Imagine, imagine me for a second as nothing but billions of tiny spheres, balls, billions of them. And then you throw a few balls in this pool of balls. And so where do the others drop? Which cells come in contact with them first? What epitope do they recognize first and start responding? Even in the same one person, it could be the site of injection and the, the first responders that come in contact could be different. So even when we can say that ideally, in theory, if I respond to vaccine negatively, then I should respond to SARS-CoV-2 negatively as well, that may not be the case. The second part is that vaccine carries an adjuvant that it is possible that with the virus, we may not, and vice versa. That in some people, the vaccine adjuvant may not be strong enough for the immune system to function, while the virus may cause dysregulation by other proteins than spike protein, for example, N proteins and others. So I think this may be an interesting thing to think that, hey, if somebody got myocarditis from the vaccine, they would have gotten it with the SARS-CoV-2 as well. But I think that may not be entirely accurate. And that is what bothers me, this lottery. But good question. So Michelle says, question, in the vaccine design, there is one more member. So let's go celebrate the member for a second. I'll come back. There is one more member. Janet Mesley, thank you very much. One more member. Okay, so back here to the question. Michelle says, in the vaccine design, 
Why did the Novavax, AstraZeneca, and mRNA vaccines use the spike protein? Isn't that particularly unstable portion of the organism that's potentially problematic? So if you think about it, their thought was that they are making a sterilizing system, which by making a vaccine against the spike, they will be able to sit between the spike and the ACE2 and prevent the virus from connecting and becoming neutralized very fast. But as we, you can see, that vaccines aren't producing antibodies exactly the same way in everyone to be able to hinder it, plus the virus mutated as well. So could they make vaccines to go after N proteins? Yes, but then going after N protein may not have made the vaccines uh, be able to hinder the virus from attaching to ACE2. Maybe they would have been better, but not, never tried. Then inactivated virus vaccines are interesting as well because they offer a larger uh, larger buffet of the, the virus vaccine, uh, virus proteins to have a more varied kind of antigens. So I think their base antibodies, I think their idea was to have just very precisely targeting antibodies to prevent the virus to even stand on the cells. And I think that didn't work very well. Oh, or let me back up. It may have worked. There are billions of doses. I don't know if these were all N protein vaccines, then how would have they worked? Or if these were all inactivated virus vaccines, then how would have they worked? I don't know. So because I don't have that data to compare to, it is unfair for me to say they, they worked or they didn't work. But what we have is now in front of us. We should learn from it, get back to the design board, and think of other strategies as well. So I wanted to answer a question on uh, Twitter. So if you don't mind, I'm going to share a <clears throat> for this question, I actually did some homework as well. So there was a question, I asked this that submit your questions. And so there are a bunch of questions I would answer or talk about them. But there was a specific question with a graph in it. This one. This was interesting question. Somebody said breaking COVID-19 vaccine efficacy against any death minus 9%, while vaccine efficacy against COVID-19 is 90%. And they use this data, which I'll show you. This is from the FDA uh, thing. And so if I go here, this data is actually, meaning this person is not making up uh, data. There is data here. I thought it was page. I think it is 30 something. So my apologies. Here, <clears throat> I remembered it, man. Okay, so here is the data that they used. And the data says deaths pre-crossover, 11 out of 19,735, and 5 out of 9,847 placebo. And similarly, there is a number for post-crossover. So keep this 11 in your mind. So what they did was they then did the efficacy analysis, which kind of is not done for the for the deaths. There is a risk reduction analysis or hazard ratio analysis, not efficacy analysis, but still they did it. So I wanted to do the same thing. So first, let me show you what they did. So if I can increase the... So here... COVID 
So this is the same data. COVID placebo case is 79. Total placebo uh, persons, 8,385. The ratio is 0.94%. Then vaccination and the events vaccinated events in the vaccinated cases, 17. Total vaccinated was 17,272. So that ratio is 0.10 and efficacy is 90%. Now deaths pre crossover. Five in placebo arm, 9,847 placebo persons 0.05%. Vaccinated side, 11 deaths. Total vaccinated, 19,735. This is the same data that is here. Um, here, if you see 11,900, 19,735, right? So that is 0.06%. And then the efficacy, uh, uh, apologies for using the term efficacy, but efficacy minus 10%. So if we use this document for the data, then we should use the whole document for the data. So keep an eye on this 11, and I'm going to now go to the deaths. I just have to find it. So one second. That's section below. Here is the section. So now if you look at what they are saying here, they are saying as of September 27, 2021, 11 participants in the Novavax arm and 5 in the placebo arm died in the pre-crossover period, correct? So that is a 1 minus 10%. One death in the placebo arm was assessed by the investigators as related to trial vaccine and no deaths in the Novavax arm were assessed by the sponsor as related to trial vaccine. So that is an important thing to keep in mind. Then if we go here, they have actually shared the whole 11 deaths here. Of the 11 deaths in the Novavax arm, four had a clear alternative etiology. So if I use that to reduce out of seven, out of 11, 4, and we are left with 7. That then creates the efficacy, again, I'll keep apologizing, efficacy of plus 30%. Then if you look at the remaining 7 people, here are some of the cases. A 75-year-old female with a history of hypertension experienced a fatal cardiovascular accident 48 days, 48 days following the second dose of Novavax. So although no clear alternative etiology is identified for the CVA, this participant had several risk factors for CVA, including her age, history of hypertension. So then they say, unlikely that the sponsor and the investigator's assessment that the CVA is not related to is reasonable. So if you said it is not related, if you agreed with them, then it will become six and the efficacy is percent I'll stop apologizing I'll just you know I apologized about using that term so 40 percent if you didn't agree then still seven 30 percent and they say a total of five cardiac arrests were reported 0.03 percent I thought that this whole thing and we discussed it yesterday I think that in this whole thing FDA was a little they didn't need to put it this way because for the other vaccine they had simply said, this this was balanced between the placebo and here. So this should these five uh, should be read with the last statement. A total of five cardiac arrests were reported. The time to onset for each was 1258 days following the second dose. Fatal adverse events of cardi cardiac arrest were reported 12 and 21 days after the first dose in 44 year old female and a 66 years old. The important thing is if you come down here, it says there were three similar events of cardiac arrest in days 6, 8, and 14 post-dose 1 in the placebo arm, which suggests they both may be just the same thing. So if you use that, then here 3 if you reduce and here 5 if you reduce, you, you see that the, the vaccinated arm was actually double the size. So 3 over there and 6 over there will be equal. 
So three over there and five over here, which actually is even more reduced on the vaccine side. But I'm just going to leave them because they're equal. Then a 79-year-old female with a history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, sleep apnea, and obesity, BMI 43.4%. Oh, sorry, 43.4 kilogram per meter square. Experienced a fatal myocardial infarction 64 days following the second dose of Novax. These participants' age and comorbidities are significant risk factors for myocardial infarction. In the context of these risk factors and temporal distance from the vaccination, the sponsor and investigator's assessment that the event is not related is reasonable. So if you then went back and said, okay, fine, we'll accept both of these, then you're left with five, which makes it 50% positive. If you said, no, I don't want to have them, then it is actually seven because four were already unrelated. These were related to drug overdoses and stuff like that. So as much as that was a an interesting way to put it, this is not really accurate because if you read the document, then there is more clarification. Okay, so that uh, one is done as well. So if you give me now a minute, I'm going to try to zip through the, the YouTube and Twitter questions as well. <laughs> this is a good question. How can they now issue EUA to know of when there is no emergency? Good question. We'll see. Maybe they'll come back and they'll say, no EUA, there is no emergency. Happy Valley Farm says, is immune therapy a solution for long COVID now to... to Immune therapy. So, yes, I would recommend if you can uh, look at the uh, FLCCC protocols. But yes, there is a possibility of immune dysregulation. So, with your permission, I'm going to go through these and kind of answer those as well. So, Electra says, why did it take so long to develop versus other vaccinations? What makes it better than the others? So we discussed that. I don't think it took longer to develop. They just didn't have enough resources and they were not big enough to get enough traction. But they still are here. Is it better? So that is a whole discussion we did. And many times I did before. Better is a relative term here. It depends what do you feel is better. Are there any reported neurological side effects like that have been observed with adeno and mRNA? Yes, so Gambari syndrome and the other neurological symptoms, I discussed them yesterday, but they say they are balanced in both. I suspect that we would see some more. Ultra says for men between 20 to 40, what is the relative risk for heart? So Ultra, your question here, relative risk for heart related and other side effects between the different vaccines options and unvaccinated. That's a larger topic. So I'll see if I can answer that at a di different time, but it is a bigger topic, not just Novavax. We saw that for men, Novavax under 28, 28 and below, there were some myocardial, um, cardio myo myocarditis. The company says they are balanced FDA says they're not balanced and caused by the vaccine. Company says we don't think these are caused by the vaccine. So that is still a fight. And I went over that data yesterday. Comparing that to the JNJ or, or the others, that needs a little more time. Uh, Red Beard says, why did they choose the spike protein? I answered that one as, as well before too. Yeah, so that's what they did. And now here we are. Does Novavax cause spike proteins circulate in the blood on exosome the same way mRNA vaccine do? So that's a good question. The idea of riding on an exosome is that if the spike is produced inside the cell and then it is packaged up on an exosome and gets out, that is a possibility. Now, this one is not getting in the cell of normal cells. So ideally, it should not be loaded. Now, in an immune cell, for example, and uh, uh, the antigen-presenting cell, macrophages or dendritic cell, will it get loaded on the exosomes in there? That's a question to be seen yet. I haven't gotten any... Uh, mechanistically, it will not be possible, but we'll see as the fight and war starts and the immune cells are killed in that process, 
the other cells then phagocytose them, will that then cause the exosome with the spike protein? I think it can cause that. The research work on mRNA vaccine you have covered on YouTube, vaccine generated spike protein, study review, yes. So exosome is possible. This second one where the co-location of the spike protein making in the DNA and all that, I think that's not going to happen because that's more of a genetic material based. Would Novavax provide any benefit? I still believe that the spilling in the blood could happen when there is inflammation. How much can it spill? That is still a question. Would Novavax provide any benefits for a person that previously recovered from COVID? So we discussed that. Um, even this morning, there was a question about somebody who got infected and then got the vaccine. And the their chief medical officer was showing that somebody got infected and then they gave the vaccine and there was a very good boost to the antibodies. And I was kind of thinking that, why did you give them a vaccine? They became infected. They recovered. Why did you give them a vaccine then? Unless either the variant changed or their health changed, there has to be a reason to give the vaccine. Otherwise, they just proved that they can get the infection and become okay. So I the, the benefit can only be, and I've been saying this for two years, benefit could be that a person who became infected and recovered was infected with a variant, let's say original variant, and now there is a new variant, or they have developed some immune system dysregulation or cancers, or they're taking immunotherapies or organ transplant. So there is a material difference in their ability to, to handle the infection, HIV then this may be need needed. Can this vaccine be taken as a second booster? I think yes, but there is no data. What is the matrix M? So we discussed that. Um, Janet said, I was waiting for Novavax as a potential booster. I'm 73 female with comorbidities who had COVID-19 Jan 21 and Moderna vaccination following April and May. I got tinnitus with 48 hour of second shot and thus have not gotten any boosters. If Novavax isn't applicable for current variant, why? That is because they have not tested for the current variant. There, there are tests, there are online uh, trials still ongoing, but the data is not yet to be used. So if I look at, let's say tinnitus, if I go here, It is no tinnitus in the document. Now, there are two questions here, but I can only see one person. So maybe the other person has blocked me, and so I cannot see them. Then uh, Alexander Cotter says, I wonder why we need a new vaccine that is not Omicron specific at this stage. Correct. And as I said before, maybe this would help them. They are in the game now. They can upgrade. I hope so. S. Esther says, please summarize the Novavax vaccine. So I have a couple of videos linked in the description where I have gone over in detail of the Novavax. One is seven minutes, one is a summary as well. <laughs> Julius says, is, is it the liver, the one that filtering dirt in our blood? If it is the case, those antibodies are being processed, that are being processed carrying C19 and other continuation in blood, the liver can't handle it because it's passive. So Julius, the liver is responsible for helping us and making energy, uh, but it's not this simple a mechanism that it can fail, but there, there is more involved to it than this simple. So I can't answer yes or no to this. Uh, Tira, tier B says, is it safe during pregnancy? So yesterday when we were going through this, there were actually abortions, spontaneous abortions. So if you see here, they said the most common side effects occurring at higher rates in Novavax arm than the placebo arm were cerebrovascular accidents and cholecystitis acute and atrial fibrillation and pneumonia aspiration and spontaneous abortion. Spontaneous abortion was 0.02% in vaccine group, four cases versus zero cases in placebo arm. Now, was that just a 
coincidence but that is actually a outcome of the vaccine so you saw this morning that was a question asked from their chief medical officer as well about pregnancy and he simply said we actually do not uh, you we do not have the pregnant women in our trial but people can become pregnant during the trial and they had the numbers in which abortion was included as well now these numbers were small enough that i don't think that they were able to say it is because of the vaccine or not so that means no data for pregnancy or for pregnant so that is the youtube side so thank you very much for your questions here now we are left with twitter <laughs> so we are at one hour what do you think should i go ahead with twitter as well and just go through these as fast as i can so let's do it evox is mocha bean mainly i'd like to know if it is if it's shit like the other vaccines are <laughs> we will find that out oh i have a proper question sooner or later my employer is going to force me to take another vax i'm done putting spike proteins in my body wherever that mrna vax lands will now be available in usa and when so if the fda provides an uh, authorization in the next couple of days then it would just be a matter of logistics to make it available so maybe another week or so or month depends upon the company's how the other companies had already staged their vaccine everywhere and they just were waiting for the authorization i think they knew the authorization will be there i don't do not know about this company's preparation but should be soon christina says mine are only simple questions from the point of view of vaccine not the pov of a medic how does novavax operate in order to build up immunity what are the potential safety issues and is novavax likely to be safer than adenovirus so that is the <laughs> these questions cause that big document to to become together to come together right so from uh, the efficacy is 90% so if you see the others had 94% some of them had 89% but the variant has changed and they don't have data for the new variant omicron so could i actually predict what would happen with the variant no the current variant how does uh, operate in order to build up immunity by um, so if you look at the novavax videos that i have linked in the description uh, it causes the immune systems to take that antigen and react to it what are the potential safety issues so we saw that those safety issues yesterday in this document um they said majority of those issues were kind of uh, local adverse reactions or fever and other things the bigger issues were myocarditis which fda made a big deal of company says no and then uh, neurological guillain-barre syndrome was present and then thromboembolism was present but they said it is balanced the allergic reactions were not present so that is how the bigger issues were kisin says kisin and will novavax require special storage transport so i answered that normal refrigeration for 6 months and if it is removed from the refrigeration then 12 hours at room temperature or that way m margarets says for the unvaxed is there any benefit to getting the novavax vaccine seeing as how it is based on the original wuhan virus so that is a i can't answer that question because the vaccine efficacy is shown with the previous variants vaccine uh, waning in 6 months is also based on the previous variant trials previous vaccines did the same with the previous variant but they didn't hold up with the new variant so unfortunately i cannot guess because if i look at the other vaccines this would do the same ross said nope okay kela says is it safe after previous covid infection almost a year ago would one dose suffice for previous infection what a risk of heart inflammation complication in comparison to mrna so in comparison to mrna according to fda this risk is more with the novavax according to the company novavax it is not so that's one second the um, after the infection 
in uh, i don't know if you are uh, you need it because of your job or other things otherwise if you had the infection and you recovered fine then uh, unless the variant has changed and so if you wanted it i think it is better in some ways but fda did create this little mess with the myocarditis and so we have to observe that or keep that in mind iman o silai says i'll pass one had covid no issues okay so you're saying <laughs> so this is a good one had covid no issues two omicron not serious threat to health three not tested against current variant no longer believe big pharma's own testing can you change my mind why would i want to change your mind uh sykes group darling the complications are disappointing i was really hoping this one was going to be the answer i think there is some so here is what we need to do because fda created that little mess and the company said no i think company should have put data together in one place to say here is the data to for everyone to see we should now do it by ourselves we should go figure out data in mexico and australia and other places and pull that together to see what is the result this is just not good um Adding another question, Every Shield has shown 50% reduction in severe COVID. Should one, 40 years old, healthy, take Novavax or Every Shield purely from a risk-benefit analysis point of view? So I like Every Shield for its behavior. The question is, can it be available? Secondly, Every Shield seems to have a longer uh, duration or window compared to the other vaccines. What are the next steps to for to approval for Novavax? So EUA should be the next one within two, three days, and then they should start administering it. The only approval so far is for the Pfizer. What can someone do ahead of time to prep to make sure reactions to the vaccine is mild? That I cannot tell because I really do not know how will a person react or even react at all. William, so I just responded to William's question. Francis says, any data on Novavax is a booster after another type? So not yet. So mechanistically, it should not be a problem, but no data. Uh, RB Long Hauler, is there any new data based on results of current worldwide use of Novavax? So that's what I was saying. We need to go and pull that data together. <laughs> this is Hamish. How about, can we get them all in? <laughs> okay, fine. So, and then there are a bunch of more questions here. I think we are out of time. I'll try to see if I can answer those questions later on too. So this is the discussion. Today we have been together for a very long time. Uh, six to 12 one. <laughs> so six, seven hours in the morning, six and a half hours and now as well. It's Novavax. Yesterday was Novavax. This morning was Novavax. Now it is Novavax. You're going to find me for talking so much. So, um, Singh to me says, waste of time. Okay. Vinod says, if the adjuvant has a significant role to play in vaccine injury, could a similar mechanism be involved in causing severe COVID? How about catching COVID when adjuvant is active? So usually we don't have the adjuvants active that much in the body. But yes, if, uh, if we are in a ramped up immune state, then we can have problems. So we, we should just say bye to sing to me or song to me. <laughs> All right, then. What else? Cool. So here we are. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe and share so that my life can be happy as well. <laughs> and there are links in the description if you would like to support this work. You can become a patron or you can become a Substack member or you can even become a YouTube member now. And then there is PayPal as well. 
and I would. You can even do buy me a coffee too. So anyways, I would see you tomorrow. Kelly says, moth allergy and Novavax. So ideally, moth allergy should not matter because it's a purified vaccine. Secondly, they didn't have allergic reactions, remember? So at least so far, there is no allergic reaction observed. So I would suspect from that that it is not a problem, but we'll see. Bye-bye.